Welcome to the Hands-On Engineer channel where we explore more about landslides. In this episode, we'll cover the different types of landslides. So sit back, relax, and let's explore this together. A rotational landslide, also known as a slump, is a type of landslide that occurs on steep slopes when a mass of soil or rock moves downward and outward along a curved surface. It is often triggered by heavy rainfall, snowmelt, or other factors that increase the weight and water content of the soil. Rotational landslides can be dangerous and destructive, causing property damage, injuries, and even fatalities. To minimize the risk of rotational landslides, it is important to avoid building structures on steep slopes, stabilize slopes using retaining walls and drainage systems, and monitor slopes for signs of instability such as cracking or bulging. These measures can reduce the likelihood of landslides and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to rotational landslides. A translational landslide is a type of landslide that occurs on steep slopes, where a mass of soil, rock, or other debris rapidly moves downhill along a roughly planar surface. Unlike rotational landslides, which move along a curved surface, translational landslides move in a more linear, straight-line fashion. They are often triggered by heavy rainfall or snowmelt and can cause significant damage to buildings and infrastructure in the affected area. To minimize the risk of translational landslides, it is important to avoid building structures on steep slopes, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls and other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability. Taking these precautions can reduce the likelihood of landslides and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to translational landslides. A block slide is a type of landslide where a mass of rock or soil rapidly moves down a slope or cliff along a defined surface of weakness. It can be triggered by heavy rainfall, seismic activity, or changes in groundwater levels, and poses a threat to infrastructure and human life. To reduce the risk of block slides, it is important to avoid building on steep slopes, stabilize slopes using retaining walls, and monitor slopes for signs of instability. By taking these precautions, it is possible to minimize the likelihood of block slides and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. Rockfall is a type of landslide that occurs when a massive rock or boulder breaks away from a steep slope or cliff and falls or rolls downhill. The rocks can range in size from small pebbles to large boulders, and they can move at high speeds, causing significant damage to property and posing a serious threat to human life. Rockfalls can be triggered by various factors, including erosion, seismic activity, freeze-thaw cycles, and human activity such as excavation or construction. They can occur suddenly and without warning, making them particularly dangerous. To minimize the risk of rockfalls, it is important to avoid building structures or roads directly below steep slopes or cliffs, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls or other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability, such as cracking, tilting, or bulging. By taking these precautions, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of rockfalls and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. A topple slide is a type of landslide that occurs when a mass of rock or soil rotates or tilts forward and moves downhill along a curved surface. It can be triggered by various factors, including seismic activity, erosion, freeze-thaw cycles, or changes in groundwater levels. Topple slides can be particularly dangerous as they can result in large blocks of rock or soil tumbling down the slope, posing a serious threat to human life and property. They can also cause significant damage to infrastructure, such as roads and buildings. To minimize the risk of topple slides, it is important to avoid building structures on steep slopes or near the edges of cliffs, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls or other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability, such as cracking, tilting, or bulging. By taking these precautions, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of topple slides and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. Debris flow is a type of landslide that involves a rapid movement of a mixture of soil, rock, and other debris downhill along a channel or drainage way. It is typically triggered by heavy rainfall or snowmelt, 
and can occur in areas with steep slopes and loose, unconsolidated soils. Debris flows can be particularly dangerous as they can move at high speeds and can carry large boulders and other debris, causing significant damage to infrastructure and posing a serious threat to human life. They can also cause flooding in downstream areas. To minimize the risk of debris flows, it is important to avoid building structures in or near channels or drainage ways, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls or other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability, such as cracking, tilting, or bulging. Early warning systems can also be put in place to alert people living in areas at risk of debris flows. By taking these precautions, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of debris flows and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. Debris avalanche is a type of landslide that involves a rapid and chaotic movement of a mixture of soil, rock, and other debris downhill, often over a long distance. It can be triggered by various factors, including seismic activity, heavy rainfall, or volcanic eruptions. Debris avalanches can be particularly dangerous as they can move at extremely high speeds, reaching up to hundreds of kilometers per hour, and can travel over long distances. They can cause significant damage to infrastructure and property in the affected area and pose a serious threat to human life. To minimize the risk of debris avalanches, it is important to avoid building structures in or near areas prone to this type of landslide, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls or other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability, such as cracking, tilting, or bulging. Early warning systems can also be put in place to alert people living in areas at risk of debris avalanches. By taking these precautions, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of debris avalanches and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. Earthflow is a type of slow-moving landslide that involves the gradual downhill movement of soil and rock material along the curved surface. It typically occurs in areas with moderate slopes and saturated soils, and can be triggered by heavy rainfall or changes in groundwater levels. Earth flows can be particularly dangerous as they can cause significant damage to infrastructure and property in the affected area and pose a risk to human life. They can also lead to the loss of soil and vegetation, which can have long-term environmental impacts. To minimize the risk of earth flows, it is important to avoid building structures on or near slopes, to stabilize slopes using retaining walls or other measures, and to monitor slopes for signs of instability, such as cracking, tilting, or bulging. Early warning systems can also be put in place to alert people living in areas at risk of earth flows. By taking these precautions, it is possible to reduce the likelihood of earth flows and their associated impacts, ensuring the safety of those living in or near areas prone to this type of landslide. A creep landslide, also known as a slow-moving landslide or a creep, is a type of landslide that occurs gradually over time. Unlike rapid landslides, which can occur suddenly and cause catastrophic damage, creep landslides move slowly and usually do not cause immediate danger to people or infrastructure. Creep landslides are typically characterized by a slow, downhill movement of soil, rock, and debris, often at a rate of only a few millimeters or centimeters per year. This slow movement can be caused by a variety of factors, including changes in soil moisture, slope instability, and seismic activity. Although creep landslides may not pose an immediate threat, they can still cause significant damage over time, particularly to buildings and other structures built on or near the affected slope. In addition, creep landslides can also disrupt ecosystems and cause environmental damage. To mitigate the potential damage from creep landslides, it is important to monitor and assess areas prone to slope instability and to implement appropriate engineering measures, such as slope stabilization and drainage systems, to reduce the risk of movement. A lateral spread landslide, also known as a lateral spreading or a flow slide, is a type of landslide that involves the horizontal movement of soil and rock on a gentle slope. Unlike vertical landslides, which involve the downward movement of material, lateral spread landslides move laterally or horizontally. Lateral spread landslides can be triggered by a variety of factors, including heavy rainfall, earthquakes, and changes in groundwater levels. The movement is typically slow and progressive, 
but it can be very destructive, especially if it occurs in urban areas or in areas with infrastructure. The lateral spreading can cause significant damage to buildings, roads, and other structures as the ground shifts beneath them. In addition, it can also result in the loss of soil, vegetation, and habitat, leading to environmental damage. To mitigate the potential damage from lateral spread landslides, it is important to identify areas prone to slope instability and to implement appropriate engineering measures, such as slope stabilization, drainage systems, and reinforcement of structures. Monitoring the ground conditions, including changes in slope angle and soil moisture, can also help detect early signs of movement and allow for timely intervention. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Your support means everything to me, and I appreciate all the likes, comments, and subscriptions. If you have any questions or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. Thank you again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.